Uh, today we're going to be uh, exploring the uh, theories of shape power uh, coming from a book by Dan A. Davidson. Uh, and we'll be getting to that in a few minutes. But uh, first, Lisa has uh, some updates on a new part of the website. Uh, we've now got a forum set up. Yes, and I'm glad to be back with all you happy faces as always. I missed a couple weeks because I was down and out for a little while, but I think I jinxed myself because last time we were on, I said, I wish humans hibernated. And a couple <laughs> days later, I hibernated for about five days. So, <laughs> but I'm glad to be back. But I wanna show you guys our new forum because it's gonna be a great place for everybody to go um, to share information with each other on what you're experiencing with our products, what you're experiencing with, if you're doing your own experiments, um, you know, things like that. So if you just go to stargatepyramids.com, uh, click on the forum link up here at the top. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay. And then you scroll down and there's different topics that we have, different categories. Um, caduceus coil and healing frequencies, EMF remediation, um, experiments with pyramid power. We have a general category, um, one for healers and how they use pyramid energy. Um, one for healing to share your experiences with how it improved your health. Um, we have a category about manifestations and how, um, you know, what you experienced uh, with that meditation, how it enhances your meditation. Um, we have an, a category on plants, you know, how um, the pyramid power affects plants and then enhancements. Um, I also put a category in there about pyramids and pets because we get a lot of um, uh, people sending us pictures of their pets. They just gravitate towards the pyramid power and then sacred geometry. And, you know, we'll add other categories as well. But, you know, this is going to be a great place for everybody to stay connected and talk about the different topics. Um, all you have to do is go into one of the topics here and click on it. So this is under healing category. It says the most important function of the Stargate pyramid is healing and click on that. And it says, um, many people report amazing healing results using the Stargate pyramid. Please share your experiences. And then all you'd have to do is go over and click new topic and then you know, enter some information there and, and start a little conversation with everybody and we can communicate that way. Now it's easy, um, you can register uh, for an account when you first go on. And I can't find the link for that, but there's somehow um, that, you, that you can register. So all it does is sends, it asks for your email um, and then you send, they'll send you a link where you can, um, add your password. And then every time you log into the forum, people will, you can add your picture to the profile and things like that. So people will know who they're talking to, but you can still participate without registering. Um, people just won't know who you are. You'll be anonymous for all your posts. Yeah. So. Lisa, let me ask you a question. You're in on your normal IP address, right? Yes. I, I that's what happened to me yesterday. Uh, if you look at the line with forum profile members and so forth, it's register will show up, but I believe what has to happen is you can't already have registered. It kind of disappears when you're okay. registered. So if it's you were probably to, there where it says log out then. Right, right. And so I okay. think if you, you know, either were to go to a incognito place, then it would show up or a new member, just look on that, on that line and you'll find Yeah. It. So, you, and you can go to the tab right here, profile, and that's going to give you the settings to adjust your profile, add your picture, um, things like that. I haven't added a picture yet. You can see, um, which members are active, I believe. I don't know if it shows, yeah, or their activity, or if it's just how many users are on there. Um, yeah, but we have a bunch of different things going on. So I think the forum's gonna be a great place for everybody to stay in touch. And if you have any other ideas for categories, you know, just enter it in the general category and let us know and we'll make new categories for that as well. Yeah, so, okay, cool. Okay, let me understand. Thanks for uh, spending the time to get it set up because- <laughs> Oh, you're welcome. I meant to do it last night, but I was working too late, so. Well, I understand. Let's see here. Okay, cool. 
I can't unshare my screen right now for some reason. What is going on? <laughs> well, let's see. Can you unshare me? I'm not sure that I can. This will stop other screen sharing. Do you want to get, I guess so, yeah. Okay, yeah, all right. Yeah, I don't know. Well, let's see, on. did that stop it? Let's see. <laughs> can everyone oh, else still see Lisa's uh, screen? Yeah. Yeah, I still see Lisa's screen. Okay, here, now I got it. Yeah. There okay. we go. <laughs> all right, cool. All right, so you know all what we're going to do today. I, this again is another one of the uh, videos I did about three years ago with very low technology. I didn't have anything like uh, Zoom to to uh, have my uh, uh, slides prepared, so I could do it at the same time. So it's, but anyway, uh, no matter. Uh, we'll go ahead and watch that, and then. Um, if there are any questions, uh, you know, we can uh, use that. But the topic of shape power, just to give an introduction, is one that, you know, for people who are new to the to pyramids, is a really, really challenging, you know, the left brain, because we don't have any background in the ether or, uh, you know, sacred geometry. Uh, what we've learned in school, in science and math class, this is just alien concept. So people have, you know, how in the world can having four sticks in the air, uh, you know, make an impact on, on, on an energy field, you know, which I never even learned about in school. So, you know, really all this is he, this was a classic when it came out about 40 years ago. And, um, you know, it, he just starts with a simple dot, and then he works on to a line and then to two lines and anyway, he, you know, he, he just kind of goes through it sequentially and uh, he brings up a lot of the reasons why we're so unfamiliar with this. But anyway, I think it's worth everybody uh, seeing and, and understanding because uh, he does a really good job of that. There are other people obviously who have, you know, we've, we've discussed Anatoly Akimov who was the, the, the Russian scientist um, who demonstrated that Cones in the shape of a phi, uh, you know, that contain the golden section or phi are the most powerful uh, objects for, for doing this. But uh, anyway, this is a, a great introduction. So I'll just uh, open up and um, uh, get, that, get that going here. Good afternoon. This is Charlie from Can you see it? PVC Pyramids. This is part of our continuing series on the uh, fundamentals of pyramid science. This is part six of that series. And today's video is entitled Shape Power, <coughs> the Research of Dan A. Davidson. Uh, this material is coming uh, exclusively today from his uh, classic work in the field called Shape Power a treatise on how form converts universal ether into electromagnetic and gravitic forces and related discoveries in gravitational physics. Here's a picture of uh, Dan uh, up uh, right now on the, on the screen. Uh, before we begin, I wanted to give you a brief uh, background on Dan. Uh, Mr. Davidson has been doing research in gravitational physics, free energy systems, and electronic medicine for over 35 years. He has concentrated his research efforts in understanding the nature of energy and how it relates to the forces of gravity, electricity, and magnetism. Over the years of research, he has witnessed and collected many fascinating stories of well-documented bizarre incidents that point to a new understanding of science. He believes that the scientific community is in the process of developing a new paradigm in our understanding of nature, which will radically change the physical sciences. His degrees in mathematics and electrical engineering have provided a basis to relate orthodox science concepts to advanced experimental research. Mr. Davidson is a strong advocate of experimentation and always backs up his theory with actual working experiments and publishes experimentally verified information. 
Dan is one of the uh, real pioneers, at least in the West, of um, uh, this concept of uh, shape power. There are others that we're going to be talking about. Dr. Ibrahim Karim uh, from Egypt uh, has uh, developed uh, similarly his ideas in a field that he now calls biogeometry. We'll be talking about that later. And obviously, uh, uh, the research that we are discussing uh, in greater detail, uh, that of uh, Dr. Uh, Golod in the Russian pyramid research as well. But before we begin, I wanted to go back and review our six core elements of pyramid science. Uh, we've discussed the existence of the ether and the existence of torsion waves in uh, previous uh, parts of this series. And now we're going to get into the third topic, which is the ability of objects, including pyramids, to act as passive torsion generators. The remaining three subjects will be uh, discussing in later parts of this series. But to begin with, uh, let's review what Dan Davidson's uh, concept of the ether is. Fundamental to understanding shape power is how the luminiferous ether interacts with matter. The basic premise is that all matter is simply a special case of the all-pervading universal energy filling all space, namely the ether. Over the years, the existence and understanding of ether has evolved as the basis for gravity and free energy effects at a micro and macro level. Laboratory experiments have shown that superluminal energy and information transfer have been effectively accomplished via theoric engineering which effectively eliminates the theory of special relativity and its assumptions of a constant speed of light. If you want to eat healthy and feel your best, <laughs> you've got to try Kachava. Kachava is the world's health. In terms of the way uh, Dan uh, characterizes the ether, he states that my research and discoveries have led me to characterize the most basic attenuation of ether as follows. One, a superfluidic particulate medium which pervades all space. Two, a medium which in its various modes is the building block of the physical universe. Three, a medium which in one of its modes is responsible for all the known grosser physical forces such as magnetism, electricity, electric charge, gravity, inertia, and the strong and weak atomic forces. Four, a medium which is controllable by our mind and can be manipulated by our thoughts. And five, a medium which can be intensified and manipulated into any force or manifestation by the use of materials, shapes, and grosser forces. And that's that part five that we're going to be focusing our efforts on today. As far as data is concerned, shape power is the ability of multidimensional shapes to manipulate the local space energy. And in this treaty, I shall use the term ether to denote the local space energy field, which permeates all space and time. The ether is a term and a concept that's not currently accepted in academic circles because the ether was supposedly disproved back in the early part of the 20th century by the Michelson-Morley experiment. Flaws in the experiment caused new experiments to be run which indicated the existence of the ether. However, the orthodox physics community has not accepted these results. Additionally, research into the last 20 years has brought the ether back in as a new guise called zero-point energy. I referred prefer the term ether because it connotes a much broader concept than ZPE. We are surrounded by natural and man-made shapes. From the remarkable geometry of the atomic and subatomic realm, to the symmetrical beauty of flowers and seashells, to the shapes of planets and galaxies, we find a kaleidoscope of shape which defines in an infinite number of ways our miracle universe. All natural shapes are the result of natural forces at work and as such are tuned into these natural forces because they are part of these forces. And now for a really key term, so focus closely on this next paragraph. 
every shape manipulates ether in some manner. A cone is an example of an infinite sided pyramid and as such will do many of the same things which a simple pyramid does. The American Indian teepee is an example of a near conic shape which has many of the same energy effects as the pyramid. In this next section, we're going to go through uh, Dan Davidson's uh, description of shape power of a variety of different objects. And we're going to start, uh, as he does, with the shape power of a point. The simplest geometric shape is a simple point. But a point is a mental construct because it has no dimensions of length, width, or height. To have a useful geometric entity that we could work with, we sh would be talking of a single etheric particle, i.e. a vortex in ether. This is simply a vortical flow of energy into the atom. The more complex the atom, i.e. with many subatomic particles, the more complex the flows in the atom's nuclear structure. On a macro level, for a complex atom, the flow will be oriented in a generally spherical pattern. In a simple atom like hydrogen, the flow will tend to look more like the lines of force around a small bar magnet. Most materials are made of much more complex atoms than hydrogen, so we can generalize and treat ether flow around an atom as generally radial with flow either toward or away from center of the atom. If we look at the flows closely, we would find that these flows are vortexing or spinning in and out of the nucleus, as seen in figure 1411. Moving on to the shape power of a line, the next level of geometric complexity is the line. In this instance, we have an aggregated collection of atoms to form a line, i.e. from two or more atoms strung together to form a line. First, let us consider the etheric flows around two atoms next to each other, which would be the simplest possible line. The etheric flows in between the two atoms would either connect and either would flow from one atom to the next, or the flows would repel and the flows would squirt out perpendicular to the radial line between the two atoms. The rest of the etheric flows would form a lozenge type radiation around the combination of the two atoms. And Dan has given us a diagram here in figure 1421 showing the etheric energy flowing around two atoms creating a simple line. By adding more atoms to the line, we simply elongate the lozenge of the radiation around the line, and the net result is etheric flows perpendicular to the line. This is illustrated in figure 1421, and when this is extended to a longer line, uh, it's in 1422, as shown below. So as you can see in this picture, uh, the lines of etheric energy are flowing perpendicular to the line itself. Now we move on to the shape power of two parallel lines. A pair of lines parallel to each other is similar to the two atoms next to each other. However, in this case, etheric flows in between the two lines would either connect and ether would flow from the atoms in one line to the atoms in the next line or the flows would repel and the flows would project out perpendicular to the plane between the two lines. The net result of this configuration is a simple plane of etheric flows around the two lines. The proximity of the lines defines the amount of interaction, and again we end up with a lozenge type energy configuration. How to store and sort all your photos and videos in seconds. No computer knowledge required. Fact three. And now for the next section, we get into the interesting part uh, that starts to uh, affect our pyramid analysis. It's called shape power of multiple intersecting lines. A large number of lines intersecting at a common vertex or top point would lead uh, 
to creation in, in the vicinity of the vertex, a magnetic field and an electrostatic field. Intersecting lines generate a flowing vortex of etheric energy. The magnetic field of a permanent magnet is also a flowing vortex of etheric energy as discussed previously. A set of intersecting rods will therefore generate a magnetic field because the etheric vortex flows at the intersection of the lines are in fact a magnetic field. This means that intersecting lines or rods should also generate magnetic fields. And now if we look at the uh, figure up on the screen, figure 1451, this is a classic experiment that Dan Davidson had uh, uh, performed by his friend at the time, uh, Joe Parr. Uh, as Dan explains in a video that I watched recently, uh, Joe's uh, wife, I think was, was Chinese, and so they had a lot of chopsticks sitting around the house and they had this styrofoam ball. So they were able to recreate this uh, experiment using non-metallic uh, instruments, a styrofoam ball and chopsticks. And this was actually the way that um, uh, this field was measured and it was done with what's called a tri-field meter, which measures electromagnetic fields. Moving on, a simple experiment was performed to test the hypothesis that intersecting rods would generate a magnetic and electrostatic field. These results are depicted in figure 1451 that we just talked about. Initial uh, measurements were taken with a sensitive meter and a flux gate mag magnetometer. The experiment was a resounding success. Intersecting lines create a magnetic and electrostatic field. And this at the time was a major breakthrough discovery wherein shape power etheric physics predicts a previously unknown phenomenon. So now that we've seen that intersecting lines such as at the top of the pyramid uh, would create uh, this etheric field, Dan went on to look at the shape power of a triangle. A triangle is the connection of three lines at their endpoints. This takes us into three intersecting lines, and from the previous section, it's easy to deduce that there will be an ether concentration at each vertex of the triangle, and this is exactly what happens to the polarity flow inside the triangle from the center into each vertex. The lowest level of ether concentration in the triangle is where bisectors of each vertex meet in a common point called the median point. Ether flows from this point into the three points of the triangle as illustrated in figure 1461. If the triangle is broken up into three triangles, almost all the energy is forced at the center with a small amount at the outside vertices. If a circle surrounds the tetrahedron triangles, the energy is focused entirely in the center of the circle slash triangle. So a circle overrides the effects of the intersecting lines. In a figure where there are triangles around the periphery of a circle, the entire energy of the figure is concentrated into the triangles. It is as if the triangles gather and focus the energy in the circle. The next section, we're going to look at a tetrahedron. And a tetrahedron here uh, is essentially a three-sided pyramid. And we're going to see some very interesting results. A tetrahedron is, is the simplest of the platonic solids, is made up of three connected triangles to form a three-dimensional figure with four vertices. The intersecting lines of the tetrahedron have a concentration of ether in a vertical pattern at the vertices, plus there is a large negative stress concentration of ether at the geocentric center of the tetrahedron at about one third of the height. And this is illustrated in figure 1471. The negative polarity at the center is a result of etheric stress drawing on ether from the four corners. So here we now have, for the first time, a three-dimensional uh, object, and we're seeing that 
in addition to the uh, uh, vertex points around the edges, that the primary concentration of etheric energy is located in the interior of the pyramid. One of the observations which many researchers have found is that ether prefers to move in circular arcs or spiral patterns. Dr. Wilhelm Reich found that orgon moves in spiral patterns and its constant motion is that of spirals. Victor Schauberger, in his groundbreaking research work on diametric energy, excuse me, diamagnetic energy, also discovered that the diamagnetic energy moved in spiral and vortical patterns. We apply this observation of ether moving naturally in spiral and vortical patterns to shape power effects, then it is reasonable to infer that the use of curved or spiral pathways to mold and guide ether will enhance the effects. And this is going to be something, this last paragraph is something we're going to be getting into more in the next couple episodes as we begin to explore the research of Russian physicist Anatoly Akhamov. But to finish up the work of uh, Dan Davidson on the energy of the spiral, one of the most common forms found in nature is the spiral, a two-dimensional figure and its three-dimensional correlative, the vortex. Examples of spirals and vortexes can be found everywhere. One of the most common occurrences is found in seashells. Most shells have partial or complete spirals. Even the common fan-shaped cells are a vortex shape. The well-known chambered nautilus with its highly regular logarithmic spiral is often used to illustrate the spiral. Another well-known vortex format is found in patterns generated by trees and plants as their leaves form. The leaves usually follow a vortex pattern, which is related to the Fibonacci numbers. The study of this natural phenomenon is called phylotaxis. When a spiral is drawn starting at the center and around counterclockwise towards the outside, the local etheric energy is drawn into the center of the spiral and shot to the outside. When a spiral is drawn from the outside to the center, the energy is drawn from the outside into the tool and transformed into a rainbow of colors and energizes the locality. The energy field is seen by clairvoyance radiates out about four feet from the center of the spiral and is truly a rainbow of beautiful living colors. Not long ago, Rita Levy Montalcini celebrated her 103rd birthday and then... If spirals are connected by drawing a spiral from the outside to the center and then continuing the line from the center to the outside of another spiral, and doing this for several more spirals that are connected from the center of one to the outside of the next one, then energy is intensified tremendously. It is as if each spiral gathers more energy as well as intensifying the energies from previous spirals. Testing the sensitives also verified this most fascinating effect of the spiral as a shape power figure. If a person is at all sensitive to energies, they can readily feel the increase in energy intensity. Now this last section, we're not gonna spend a lot more time on right now because we've got uh, other things that uh, we need to talk about before we get back to this. But uh, you're gonna find, and we're gonna come back to this concept that uh, uh, decreasing spirals that feed energy into each other, uh, either as uh, circles or spheres, uh, it's going to be a um, basic part of the geometry of the Russian pyramids as we begin to discuss this in greater detail. And this will be coming in, in part four of the series. Once we uh, have finished this, we're going to be talking about the unique spiral geometry of the Russian pyramids and how that specified geometry uh, works to increase the shape power of Russian pyramids.
Okay. I don't know if that helped or not, but uh, um, if you have it, you can go online and find Dan's book uh, for free online if you just Google uh, Shape Power Dan A. Davidson. And it's not a long read. It's uh, maybe takes you a couple hours to go through it. But uh, um, Dan was really one of the early people in, in the West. I mean, the Russians knew about this stuff for years, but, you know, he, he actually, uh, you know, somebody from America who's done this work and, and was a pioneer in it. Somebody has written me and told me that he has a new version of that book out. I looked for it and I can't find it. But if anybody happens to come across it, I'd like to, you know, to find out about the new editions, if, if there is one. So um, anyway, are there any questions on that? But I mean, basically, you know, what he's what he's trying to prove through some basic, you know, scientific principles is that, you know, I impact your energy field, you impact mine, but certain shapes are going to have a special impact on, you know, how much impact that that uh, shape is going to have on its environment's energy field. So, uh, I'm doing more research on that right now and in terms of harmonics and I, I'll be doing a probably a video on that um, you know in the next uh, week or so uh, Lisa and I are going to be on a couple of shows and you know hopefully we can talk about that at that time but uh, anyway that's uh, we've got kind of a short session today I don't know if there are any general questions people have of Lisa or me but uh, if not you know we're done with we're done with this for today so Anyone Charlie. want to make any comments? Yeah. Yes, please. Um, so from from that video, I, I understand then that the, the highest concentration of energy in the pyramid would be in between the five points of the triangle, the five corner points, and then the, the top point. So it would literally that's, be right in the middle. Well, that's, that's his thesis. Yeah. That's his thesis, I'm not yeah. so sure that I agree with that totally. Okay. Uh, I I think Lisa and I have found that uh, the highest energy fields tend to be higher up in the pyramid. So, uh, hence the 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 ampli apex amplifier where exactly, it is. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, when I did that three years ago, I, we hadn't tested any of this stuff ourselves, but that seems to be uh, the case. I don't know, Lisa. You got any thoughts? <laughs> No, it's the same. Yeah, my, it's the same thing. Yeah, the highest concentration of energy that we found, and even Lori, actually, she's the one that discovered this mostly um, when we were working with her, but is the apex amplifier area. But there's obviously an energy generated outside of the pyramid too, you know, like what for the Russian experiments when they were finding plants that went extinct that were starting to grow outside of the pyramid. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. so. Because I remember in the David Wilcock um, talks on the um, wisdom teachings, remember him describing, I think it was the Greek definition of pyramid was pyre, pyre, mid. In, the pyre in the middle. Pyre, pyre yeah. in the middle. So yeah. it kind of made yeah. sense that the, the, the highest concentration yeah. may be in the middle point. I mean, it, yeah. you know, not that it matters, but. Um, the, the other thing I would suggest is that, you know, he was doing a tetrahedron, which is, a, a, a pyramid or that has four equal sides base and three sides and so mm -hmm. that would make more logical sense that it would be in the middle uh, yeah i just yeah. get the feeling that the geometry with the difference in the geometry that that's probably what's pushing it up higher don't know so i guess yeah. that would probably change then um it would probably change with a, a, a giza pyramid to a russian pyramid as well that's right. I think it's going to have yeah. something to do with the relative slopes of the of the pyramids as to where it, where it's that's the the real yeah. Power yeah. Try try standing. Try a standing meditation if you can. And if you yeah. have a tall pyramid idea. and see how that affects you. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to to create one where I could actually just wear one. You know, <laughs> just go for yeah. a walk through it. <laughs> A well, you always, you always go to <laughs> always get get yourself a party hat because that works pretty well. <laughs> yeah, a wizard's hat. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. 
that you yeah. can definitely grow. So have you ever tried to make one? Like a we like have. a six degree hat. Yeah. We actually did that. Um there it, if I, um, if you bear with me, I'm going to show you a, sure. a trick on how to do that. Hold on just oh, a second. Oh, yeah. Charlie makes a cone hat, though, but we need to make a pyramid hat. <laughs> pyramid hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They I do guess have, a cone, cone's they do practical, have isn't it? Yeah, they do have um, Giza-shaped pyramid hats. Wow. I've seen, yeah. Some of them are made handmade in India right out of pure copper. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be interested to 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 wear a hat, you know, set that that seventy six degree angle, and and maybe do some cognitive work, you know, do my taxes or something like that, and oh, yeah. just see, just see what happens, you know, see if yeah. I can concentrate longer, or you know, it would be it would be interesting. Yeah. Now, if it, you can probably get these online, this is just a a part, kind of a small safety cone yeah and yeah. most safety cones have this geometry it's just one of those things so Interesting. yeah what you can do i this is like a piece of construction paper you know yeah. uh, all you all you have to do is ah. form this around uh you know the inside of that cone and you can basically make one on your own. And, oh, wow. uh, you know, if you wanted, you could put some little, you know, <laughs> strings in it and you've got yourself a wizard hat. So uh, that's the way that's, 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 that's the simple way I'm to gonna, do it. I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I'm excited. Well, you know, you can do that with just regular paper as well. You know, you get a couple layers of it. You don't necessarily need the construction or whatever the, uh, what would that be? I don't know what kind of board that is, but, uh, you know, it'll work. And yeah, we, we did, we, we actually did a session. What was that, Lisa? A year and a half, almost two years ago now with the woman from, from England who showed us how to make pyramids out of this type okay. of you know paper yeah. um and and that's that's actually i i went ahead and transferred that that's that's actually in the how-to video section now um so you can find that if you want but that's and that would you can do the same thing with cardboard to make the pyramid yeah. as well when i was a reiki practitioner i um made some cardboard pyramids out of and just scored them ever so slightly so i could bend it and taped yeah. the one end together and I would put them underneath my Reiki table. So the clients were getting the peak energy from the pyramids as well. So I think I had three of them under there. Right. And then I would put the orgone pyramids on, on their chakras as they're lying down. So they had mm. double whammy pyramid energy there. Nice. So it worked pretty well. So. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Any other comments or questions? Otherwise, uh, I guess we're done. Yes, yeah, Sherry. You need to unmute yourself. There we go. Nope, you're still muted. Oops, you're muted again. <laughs> there. Is that good? Um, That's good. I was actually wondering, after what you just said, if there's a difference. I think I'll have to check it. Um, if you sit down in the pyramid, as opposed to sitting on a stool up toward mm -hmm. the um, amplification plate, I wonder yeah. if that, because you would be up higher toward yeah. you know. What, what I find, what I find with my plant, because I do plant experiments, and I had one yeah. of the plants sitting on the floor in the center of the pyramid. And then I had another one sitting on the chair where I normally sit. And the one on the chair grew the fastest, um, but then the one underneath, um, eventually it, it slowly caught up to it. So, okay. it, you know, okay. so you are getting more energy off in this area. 
the higher up yeah. you go. So okay. Well, I think I'll try it with a stool and see what happens. Yeah. 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 Why not? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, no problem. All right. Well, I guess it's a short session today, and uh, we'll we'll be back next week. I think. Yes. <laughs> Allie, Sounds do good. we have it? Do we have a speaker for next week, or do we know what we we're doing? We don't have one booked yet, so we'll have. Okay. To talk about All that. right. So be on the lookout for your email. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll have it figured out. We uh, will by early early next week. Okay. Okay. Take care, everybody. Enjoy your Saturday. Thank you all for uh, attending. Lots of love. Have a great rest of your weekend. <laughs>